Hello and welcome to day number 112, which means, which means we're a little bit over halfway. Not by much, because, so my, one of my ultimate goals is to be as low as I can be for day 223, which is uh, my friend Rosie and my friend Kerry's wedding. Um, that's on day 223, going by my count, so... I'm kind of in this awkward position where, it, it, like, 111 wasn't enough, and 112 is a little bit over. So, hmm, never mind, never mind. We all know we're over halfway. Weight-wise, we're not over halfway. Weight-wise, we're... Hmm, actually... Weight-wise, we're probably about somewhere close to maybe, like... A th between a third and a half, I want to say. Like, I'm, I'm not expecting to get down to, like, 60 kilos or 130 pounds. Like, I'm, I'm not expecting that in any way, shape, or form. What I am hoping for is to get to maybe about 150 to 175. Like, somewhere in between those two is fine for me. Like, around about, like... 70 to 80 kilos, maybe a little bit over 80. I, I don't know, like, I, all I've got to really go on is how much progress that I've made from day zero to now, and sort of forecast that forward, and I have no idea where bone and tendons and muscle stops, like, and, and that's like the defined point, and where like fat is on top of that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to end up looking like, basically, but I know I've got plenty to go, is the really, really weird roundabout way that I'm going to start this all out, I suppose. Uh, right, how are we getting on? Well, we started out today pretty strong, actually. We started out pretty good. Um, unfortunately, as the day has gone on, things have gotten worse. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> so, uh, slight disclaimer, I have had a couple of beers, so I'm I'm a little bit different to how I would usually act. Like, I, I'm trying to keep my thoughts a little bit straighter. I know that doesn't seem like a thing that you're probably going to notice much, given how much I ramble usually, but, you know. Um... Right, let's get on with stuff. So, why hasn't today been a great day? Why has it not gone well? So, I woke up this morning, I was feeling great, I was feeling awesome, I was like, yes, today is a day of salad and, and potatoes and, and just get everything ready because tomorrow's my day off, my little, uh, my little vacation day. As, uh, as Brian eloquently put it on uh, on a, a podcast that I've just listened to. Uh, he was uh, featured on episode number 154 of Kickin' Life. Um, I'll see if I can put like a link to that in the description, and, because that is honestly, like it, it's a really good hour talking about motivation and self-improvement and stuff, and how you choose a path and stick with it, and what you can do to help yourself on that and stick with something for a long-term goal, like, you know, losing weight, for example. Um, yeah, like, I, 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 I just listened to that, but my, my vacation day is tomorrow. So, started out, got up, had lunch with Rowan, um, you know, obviously after we'd been up and played around for a little bit and maybe watched some cartoons and stuff, you know. And ate the salad, which is this. I had some hummus with it. Not a great deal, but a little bit. I had some uh, some of these uh, rye cracker things as well, um, which are very stale, <laughs> unfortunately. So they, uh, they weren't particularly great, but, you know, we were out of bread and I didn't really want to go to the shop or anything just then. Um, and then... I got some bad news. Yes, I got bad news. It's not amazingly bad news. 
like you know, it's not like someone's died or anything like that. Um, no, the the bad news that I got is because it's forecast to rain tomorrow, and it's forecast not to on Thursday. Sorry, I had a bit of a hangnail and I wanted to get it sorted out. Um, because it's scheduled to rain, because the you know the the weather report says it's going to rain tomorrow and it's not going to rain on Thursday, apparently. Uh, Randall, who is the organizer of the Expat Dads group on Facebook, has shifted the meetup. So it's not going ahead tomorrow. It's not going ahead on Wednesday. It's going ahead on Thursday, which is great. It's wonderful because the entire idea of me going to it on Wednesday is because Saguta is going to a leaving do at her work. Someone is, you know, someone's moving on from, uh, you know, where Saguta works and, and everyone's having a party to say goodbye. And that, like Thursdays is usually board game night. Now, I don't mind giving up a Thursday if Saguta's got something on, you know, like share and share alike and all that sort of stuff. But with there being this other engagement on Wednesday, I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, we can both still do something midweek that gives us something to do. And the event's been rescheduled. So because it's Friday, uh, because it's going to be Thursday instead, um, I now can't go because I'm not going to, not going to turn around to Saguta and say like, you know, like, no, they changed my thing, you give up your thing. Like, nah. So, uh, so yeah, no, I can't go. So I'm not going to be going somewhere where there's uh, craft beer and all sorts of stuff like that on tap. And there's not going to be a barbecue pit cooking sausages and currywurst and, and you know, fresh-made sauerkraut and things like that. No. Now I'm staying in on Thursday night with Rowan and, uh, you know, sort of like doing the single parenting thing um, just while Saguta's out partying. Um, <laughs> oh, well, never mind. So I, I was a little bit put out by that. I was a little bit bummed by it. But uh, I sort of came up with a an idea, which is, well, I'd already planned that, you know, like Saguta's going to work from home on Wednesday, uh, you know, we're, we're gonna have this nice little like lunch thing where we, we order something in, probably pizza, because I, I, I've, I've decided ahead of time what sort of food that I wanted. And I've been having a couple of weird hankerings for pizza. So I was like, yes, pizza, pizza sounds great. Let's do a pizza and we'll order in, you know, pizza and some, some chicken strips and, and garlic sauce and all of that sort of stuff. And we'll have like a meal together as a family at lunchtime and then I can put Rowan down for bed so good to go back to work. I can carry on with like painting and doing stuff and, and whatever I feel like doing at the time. And Diana, you know, we could still do that. And then when it comes to dinner time, when it comes to the evening meal, what we'll do is instead, let's see whether or not Siguta wants to go to uh, the barbecue place that she took Villas to, um, you know, like back on back on day one of the Mary's Mini, uh, like day 97, 98, I want to say something like that. Mm. Yeah, like something like that. Uh, and... You know, I, I sort of said, right, okay, well, I'll, I'll let her know. So I, I messaged her and I said, okay, well, what about if we go to this barbecue place? We'll take Rowan along and the three of us will eat stuff and, you know, we'll, we'll just have like a good time. And Sigurd said, oh, that sounds amazing. Yes, that sounds wonderful. We'll definitely do that. And I said, yes, brilliant, yes. It's not a complete washout. Amazing. Dancing times. And then, <laughs> so, um, I, I, you know, I went out and I met Saguta at, uh, at this little play park thing because she, she bought a rug and a set of lights for our kitchen from one of her co-workers. 
and needed me to come along and, and bring like a, a trolley to put it all on and strap it to with ratchet straps and that sort of thing in order to get it back to the house. So I met her at this play park while Rowan's running around like an idiot and, and having loads of fun. And she dropped the bombshell on me that, oh no, I, I can't work from home tomorrow because there's too many meetings that I have to go to. <laughs> so so I'd, I'd planned for and, and had this wonderful idea and, and plan of like how Wednesday was going to go and it was going to just be like, it, it's like a proper little vacation. I get to spend time with my wife and my son and, and then, you know, like, then I go out and party with my friends and that changed to, oh, well, you know, I still get to spend more time with my wife and son and, and then we can go out to a nice restaurant and do this and, you know, we don't get to go out too often. And then it was like, I'm going to be sat in the house doing the same thing that I usually do with my son on my own. And then we're going to go out and have a nice meal on the evening. Great. <laughs> so, so it's just been, it's just been like one, like drop after another of things just like, uh, uh, you know, um, and that got to me, that got to me quite a lot. And I was like, you know what? I've got the stuff in the house for like a vegetarian lunch and stuff like that. I, I could just still go ahead with getting pizza and stuff for me and Rowan, but I'm, I, I'm too warm. I'm absolutely sweating buckets, which yeah, it, I, I was gross earlier. Like I, I looked awful like i was just sitting here pretty much exactly here on the sofa and like there was just sweat pouring out of me just because it's so warm and humid over here and then you know i like lugged around this bloody rug and all this heavy stuff as well which probably didn't help i said to myself right i'm you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna call it early i'm gonna actually have uh you know i'm, I'm going off now I'm, I'm gonna have my vacation starting now, and I'll have like a day and a day and a little bit. So, uh, so I've had two beers, which there you go. Like it, it's the same type of beer. I did a thing that I don't usually do. I bought like six of the same brand of beer. Um, usually, I'll buy like a couple of different ones and taste them because I like the taste of beer. I was. You know, I was actually going to do a beer review channel and I, I like tasting different beers, but this was cheaper, <laughs> pretty much. This was cheaper and it was easier to pick them all up. Uh, so I've drank two so far. I'm probably going to have a third while I'm like doing uh, video editing and stuff. Hello, what can I do for you? Oh, what can I do for you? Do you want to come up here? Hi. Oh, dearie me. Hello, kitty. Hi. Oh, there we go. There we go. What a good little kitty. Oh, yes. Internet fame. You have more subscribers than me on Instagram, and you have more fans on Twitter than I do. I don't know. Maybe you can work your magic. Maybe I can keep you coming in on the YouTube channel, and that would, that would get me a lot more views. What do you guys think? Should I keep the cat? Yeah, you're going to wave to everybody. Yeah. What a good little kitty. Oh, yes. <laughs> I might cut that out. I don't know. Depends if I can find... Don't eat me. Oi. Excuse me. Why are you trying to eat me? Hmm? Ow. Do not eat. Do not eat the human. The human is not for eats. Good kitty. There you go. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Right. So... I've had beer and, you know, that's, that's actually helped me quite a bit. That's helped cool me down a little bit, um, which is, is nice. I was running a bit warm there. I've, I've had <laughs> loads and loads of water as well, but that was just running out of me. So that was, uh, that was not great. Um, uh, yeah, like me and Sigurta, we got back here, put the boy in the bath. I went to the shop, bought some drinks and, and stuff, and then... Meow. Meow, meow, meow. No, leave the microphone alone. No. 
Nope. Nope. I know that you're really tempted by it. I know you like it, but no. Um, yeah, and then we ordered in and we got Indian. And this is what we got. We got like a, a sharing platter sort of thing just to like try stuff out, see what it was like. Because we, uh, we've not had Indian for a while. We wanted to see what it was. Get off. Wanted to see what it was like, you know, try some, try some different things. So I've, uh, I have eaten meat today. I ate meat for my, uh, for my dinner there. I've, uh, I've had a few, a few of these as well, nacho, uh, nacho tortilla chips. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's not been, it's not been wonderful, but certainly not been awful. Um, I've actually, I'm, I'm going to call this kind of a non-scale victory. Like these things you will know are pretty much, you know, they're designed for you to eat loads of them. Before I started losing weight, it would not be outside the realm of possibility or indeed unusual in any way for me to eat an entire bag that size to myself within a day. And that's including extra meals and stuff. I opened that bag maybe about 10, 15, 20 minutes ago while I was listening to the podcast with Brian. And I have eaten eight tortilla chips. And that's it. I, I, I don't want to put my hand in the bag anymore. Like, I, I don't want to eat more of them. <laughs> I don't know, like, it, it, it could just be that I'm full from the sheer amount of that sharing platter that we ate, because we, like, here's, here's the picture of the aftermath, actually. Like, me, Sigurdur, and Rowan demolished that. I mean, yeah, all right, it was a platter for two people, and two and a little extra bit of a person absolutely caned it, but, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, cat, please, no. Oh, he's woke up the computer. <sighs> Are you quite done? <sighs> you quite done? You finished? Yeah, oh, I know. Uh will take the opportunity to wipe my eyes because for some reason I keep going out of focus. And misting. And it's not my glasses, it's my eyes themselves. Right, okay, so we're back and the computer's off again. Um, yeah, like we, we absolutely came that food. Um, it was it was very, very good. It was very, very tasty. The, uh, the, <laughs> it started off in this really weird way. Like we, we started with the start, like the starters, obviously, as you do. And I'm sat there and I'm eating them and I'm like, yeah, I feel great. This is like, this is a wonderful, like cheat sort of thing. And, and you know, I'm like, I'm eating it and it, it tastes really good. What is this? It doesn't taste like chicken. It doesn't taste like cheese either in the starter. What, what is it? It's cauliflower. <laughs> the starter was cauliflower, zucchini, or courgette, you might call it, um, <laughs> onion rings, <laughs> and, and a potato pakora. Or, or like a, a, like a, a sort of Bombay potatoes, um, pancake-y wrap sort of thing. <laughs> I'm just eating the starter going, oh my god, this is so tasty, this is wonderful, this is like, this is easily the best part of the dinner. Oh, <laughs> apart from the fact it's been cooked in oil and stuff, it's pretty much compliant with, <laughs> with the McDougal diet. Oh, I, oh r really? <laughs> so, yeah, like, the, I think out of the entire thing, I've, I've definitely eaten meat, but... I, I mainly hit the vegetables. 90% of what I ate was just the vegetables and the rice and stuff. Like, I, I, I think there was like a, a chunk of duck in there and a piece of, a, like a, a, a chicken leg, but like most of it's just been vegetables. <laughs> so I can't, I can't even cheat correctly anymore. Like, what the hell? <laughs> Oh man, 
Oh dear. Well, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so there's been there's been that. We uh, we ate some interesting stuff. I think what I'm gonna do tomorrow for lunch is I'm gonna I'm gonna order in some pizza for me and the boy around about lunchtime. We might see whether or not we can make it a little bit of a later lunch. Because if he sleeps a little bit later and has a little bit more of a sleep, then he'll possibly be better behaved in the restaurant because he'll not be quite as hungry. We'll see. We'll see. Hmm. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, we'll, we'll see how everything goes. Um, there's not really much else that I can say about it. Like, nah. Um, I was considering, um, you know, because it is a day off and, and stuff, like actually taking the camera equipment along, just like the gimbal or something, and getting some really, really nice shots of what we're eating in the barbecue place. But so far, everyone that I've talked to about that idea, like Jessica and Suguta and, <laughs> and myself, the the response to that has been you probably shouldn't make a really like a really nice looking meat dinner thing and feature it as heavily if you're on a diet where you don't eat meat like 99% of the time you probably shouldn't do that because then if someone's struggling they might not appreciate it too much and I can I can get that absolutely. So uh, so I'll, I'll take some photographs of it, but I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be fetishizing it. Let's say I'm not going to be doing the, uh, the the things that I would probably do if presented with a plate of really really nice food, and it's a special one off. I suppose I should. I really need to pick up some extra little bits, you know? Like, there's, there's certain things that I've, I've wanted to get for, for multiple projects. Let's try and say words again. Let's actually try and speak English. There's things that I've wanted to buy for multiple projects. And I can do that now. Like, me and Seguta have finally got to a point where we've paid off enough outstanding balances and debts and things like that that we are... Uh, we're comfortable with having like um, what we call mess around money. I mean, we've got a different name for it that is, you know, a little bit less safe for work or children. But uh, it's essentially just like we get a little bit of a personal budget each month to go out and, and that's what we have to just blow on anything that we like. So in my case, I've already spent 20 bucks 20 euros on um, some of the in-game currency for the magic arena sort of thing. Um, just so that I can I can enter some extra events, I can get some extra like free rewards and, uh, and competition rewards and stuff by winning tournaments. And I've been winning tournaments. Like I, I'm actually quite surprised by that because I'm not the greatest magic player. I definitely allowed it to take a a big backwards seat when I was running events and trying to come up with things that were fun for all the other Magic players. Um, and then I, I've not really gotten back into the swing of it as much as I did before I was making all of these events and stuff. So to just sort of come in and say, oh, I, I get how this works, and then just start taking down events when I, I never managed to do that before is actually really like really cool like no you i'm sure there's someone that's going to chime in and say oh well it's because you've lost weight and now you're thinking clearer and maybe maybe or it could just be that you know apparently elementals are broken <laughs> you never know you never know it wouldn't be the first time wizards of the coast has printed silly cards that do silly things um where were we Good God, like, what is going on with my brain? Right, um, yeah, so, like, food. Yeah, I shouldn't record a video and, like, fetishize, for lack of a better word, awesome meat food, um, regardless of how tasty it is or how much I'm looking forward to it because, you know, people don't appreciate that sort of thing. Um, 
so I can just talk and distract you instead. Um, yeah, the, the things that I want to buy for multiple different projects. Um, in my mess around money this month, um, I'm going to be buying some... Uh, like, my mess around money is going towards that box set of the, the miniatures that I'm going to start painting uh, this weekend, like Saturday. Um, which is... You know, that's that's my thing. That's what I'm going to do with some of that. But that's not all of the mess around money that I've got. Um, a little bit extra of it is going to go on paints because I, I need one or two that are, you know, like dead or dying um, or that I just don't have yet because I, I've concentrated on other things first, other colours, other groups, other colour pairings, all of that. So I need to pick up a couple of those. I'm set for paintbrushes and tools, so that's a very, very big expense that I don't have to deal with. But a thing that I do want to get hold of is a, a, a miniature turntable. Now, these things are, are meant to be for showing off models and, and little miniature bits and bobs. Uh, it's basically just like a tiny little double A battery powered or solar powered turntable like you sit a thing on it and you press the button and it slowly rotates i think like one revolution every five or ten seconds or something like it, it's it's got a bit of torque to it it can move around like heavy miniatures but it's not like it's not anything awesome you know and i've wanted that for a couple of different reasons one i wanted it for um the beer review side of things because you know like then you can have a, a pint that's rotating or a bottle that rotates without actually moving the camera and it keeps it nice and centralized um i thought that would be nice for titles of doing that that was years and years ago uh when i was first starting to think about you know doing something with youtube what i want to use it for now is i believe it will actually take a bowl or a plate and rotate it slowly which will make much more interesting and visually pretty and visually appealing shots of food and stuff. If I've just thrown something together, put it in a bowl, put it on a turntable, press the button, and you can see it, and it looks pretty and beautiful. Um, but also I can use it for, for my miniatures and stuff. Now, I, I seem to remember it only being about 10 euros for one of those uh, last time that I saw it in a store. So hopefully I'll be able to find that again. You never know. Um, I figured as well what I can maybe do is, you know, uh, YouTube allows you to put a little watermark in, in the corner down here. And I thought, what would, be, what would be more fun than carving the word subscribe into the side of a potato and sticking it on that little turntable with some like green screen cloth and stuff, recording it, bumping up the saturation on the green, so that it was, you know, like ridiculously, ridiculously green, and then green screening that as my watermark, so that you just have a little potato that turns around and says subscribe, and then disappears again. I thought that would be quite cool, you know. It, it's, it's, yeah, another step on completely unnecessary things for the channel, like, you know, because why not? I like I'm enjoying what I'm doing. At the end of the day, it's whether or not I enjoy it that matters. Obviously, you guys enjoying it too is like a thing that I enjoy as well, but primarily this is this is all about me. <laughs> it's it's an exercise in narcissism that I didn't actually think that I needed. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Uh right, let's talk about other stuff. So we've talked about things that I've eaten today. Um, oh, snacks and stuff, actually. Right, okay, look, I'll, I'll, I'll move out of the way and then we'll just do lunch, snacks, dinner, more snacks, that sort of stuff, okay? Here you go. Here's, here's, the, little, here's the little slideshow sort of thing um, going on. Had lunch, had some snacks, uh, had some chocolate, which wasn't good. Um, then, you know, had dinner, had beer, had, uh, had more snacks, and uh, now here we are. There we go. Um, what else have I done today? Well, today's actually been very productive. Um, 
I've got a little video that I'm going to run on the screen. Um, possibly not the picture-in-picture. Picture. I think I'm just going to lay it over the top of this. So, three, two, one. Right, so, I spent last night taking the plastic frames that are in these two boxes that you can see in front of you from Games Workshop, and I turned them into these, which I, is basically 15 small plastic men um, with a variety of guns and knives and all that sort of stuff, because I'm a massive nerd and this is next on my painting table, and I figured this would be something a little bit different for people to see, and, you know, it gets me back into the swing of painting and stuff, ready for this, uh, ready for this thing that I'm <laughs> doing that's kind of ill-advised, I think, which is I'm marrying two 10-day projects together. So the Mary's Mini for another 10 days starts on Thursday. Saturday, I'm going and I'm buying this pack of nine miniatures and hopefully getting them all finished and really, really nice at the end of the Mary's Mini. So a little bit less than like seven days or something. And part of that is clearing off this extra project that I've got, which is these 15 people, these 15 dudes. So uh, so here's the time lapse now. Like you can, you've seen in the video there, like spray painting them white. Um, just giving them like a little bit of a coat of primer and now we're doing the time lapse of, of sort of like paint experiments. I'm trying to figure out a way of painting them so that they all look cohesive. Uh, ten of them are meant to be, f uh, you know, sort of deserters from uh, a military unit and another five of them are just sort of religious nut jobs that have uh, have just grabbed whatever the clothing that they've got that's that's riotous colors and all that sort of thing which is why i'm messing around with with purples and greens and all that sort of stuff and i eventually sort of lucked upon this uh, this recipe you can kind of see as i figure it out where it's uh, it, it's a paint called reitland flesh shade mixed with uh, screaming skull delightful paint names games workshop has and I just mix those together and it goes on very, very thin so that you can still see the white underneath, but, uh, but only on like the raised edges and it sinks into the recesses and then comes out darker. Um, it's what we call like a, a wash, pretty much. And that, that's what I'm going to paint the fatigues as. Um, everything else, like the purple and stuff, is just sort of like messing around a little bit and, and trying it and experimenting. Uh, I'm probably going to have to repaint a couple of these um, just because, you know, I'm, I'm trying new things. I need to figure out what I'm doing because I've thought about the rest of the colours for the rest of the stuff, but not the colours for these guys. So, hmm, yes. Anyway, right. So yeah, I think that's I think that's actually been the the time done for that. I'm not entirely sure. It might still be playing. It might not. You might be looking at my ugly mug and going, "Come on, like stop talking about the things that we finished watching now." Um, yeah, what else can we talk about? Is there anything to talk about? Not really. Like everything's pretty much done. Everything's pretty much fine. Um, I did have a, a wonderful, wonderful uh, sort of <laughs> a, a wonderful time just a, a few minutes ago, like before I started recording the vlog. Um, I just to say finished listening to the uh, to the, the what you call it to the, the podcast, and in the last couple of minutes, uh, Richie, who's the host of uh, Kick and Life. Turns to Brian, I, I'm imagining behind the microphones, turns to Brian and says, So, Brian, do you have a sign-off for us? And Brian says, uh, 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 No. Uh, the, these aren't the droids that you're looking for. And that made me giggle a little bit, because, one, I know already that Brian's a bit of a nerd 
Like, me and him are, are very nerdy. We've had some interesting conversations about stuff. Um, Jessica usually responds to that by rolling her eyes or <laughs> sending, sending gifts of eye-rolling, uh, which is absolutely the, the correct response, as far as I'm concerned. And I say this as someone who used to be, like, lord of the nerds in a comic store. And I, I, I've seen that same reaction once before, where you're sort of wrong-footed by something and you just go, Star Wars. And I'm gonna see if I can get the video and I'm gonna see if I can put it in here because it's like, I, I think it's free use. I'm not entirely sure. I, it might be that the BBC has copyright. I, I, I really don't know, but it's, it, it's, uh, a video of my old boss. So here's Alex from Forbidden Planet Bristol. My favourite line is Utini, which is the Jowl's war chant as they fry uh, R2D2. How old are you? 37. Aren't you a bit big for this? Never! Ali Bows, BBC Points West. How about that for a reaction? <laughs> you, can, you can hear the journalist lady blink <laughs> in response to Alex's little little outburst. I like, what's your favorite line from Star Wars? And Alex responds with possibly one of the nerdiest responses ever. I it could have been worse. It could have been that he broke out into like part of one of Jabba's monologues or or like you know like started reenacting the uh, reenacting the cantina scene where Han shot Greedo first or you know second like entirely entirely up for debate I know that I know that it's a sorely contested point but yeah like oh man I I miss working there <laughs> those people were my people Ah, oh, man, never mind. It's many years ago now. I'm gonna go and see them again at some point in the future, very, very soon, like November. But, ah, oh, man, yeah. Getting nostalgic, terrible. Right, okay, look. As fun as that is, as fun as that was, it is kind of late. I'm gonna go and yeah, I'll, I'll just speak to you tomorrow. I, um, a thing that I've actually been experimenting with is recording footage from uh, Magic the Gathering games. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the, the time lapse and sort of stuff of, of painting and things, so it's a lot quicker. But, like, is, is that something that people will be interested in seeing? Maybe? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like a thing that I can do to branch out because I can't necessarily keep up daily vlogging every single day for the rest of my life. That would be a lot of content of a white dude that probably is unnecessary because once I get to a certain weight, I'm gonna stop losing weight and I'm gonna just start maintaining. And there's only so many times that you can say, well, I, I was up again today, and then yesterday I went down, and, you know, like, it's not very interesting. I'm fairly certain that there's a lot of people sticking with this now just because of the sunk cost fallacy, you know? <laughs> I've, I've watched a hundred days of vlogs. What's another 200, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, I know. I, I'll, I'll have to give it a, give it a good think and see whether or not it's, it's something that people want to see. Um, oh, I'll tell you what we could do. Because uh, someone asked about it. So, uh, someone asked whether or not I would be willing to talk about how me and Saguta met. And Jessica has asked this as well previously. And I, I don't talk about it that much because it. It's mildly embarrassing, I guess, but kind of not at the same time. Like, uh, hmm, yeah. So, it's a very long and convoluted story, but I'm going to try and, like, do it quickly for you. So, back in 2006, 2007, I want to say 2007. Maybe. Yeah, 2007-ish. 
Um, I was living with my mum in Hartlepool, which is my hometown uh, in the northeast of England. And I was taking the bus every single morning at around about 5.30, 6 a.m. to get to Middlesbrough, uh, which is, uh, you know, around about 40, 45 minutes bus ride away. And what I was doing at that time was I was going to university. I, I was going to Cleveland College of Art and Design, uh, the Middlesbrough campus, the Green Lane campus. Um, and I was studying film and TV production along with a bunch of my friends and, and you know, sort of some co-workers because there was a brief stint where I actually worked at the university as a cleaner that kind of wasn't official, but... You know, I got like one paycheck and then like didn't work anymore um, because they didn't need me. Um, Yeah, like I I was going there and over the winter, 2006 leading into 2007, um, I got a cold and I, you know, I felt absolutely awful i felt atrocious i I, you know i had like the big black bags under my eyes i was having trouble waking up i was constantly coughing and sneezing and there was mucus and grossness and and i have a very i've got a very british person view on my own illness which is everyone else if they're ill take care of yourself, do whatever. But if it's me that's ill, pretty much just sort of get on with life because you kind of need to. And there's always something that needs to be done and people just soldier on through stuff and come on Martin, why aren't you doing that too? So I shrugged it off and said, ah, it's just a bit of man flu, cough, cough, cough. And just carried on with with my life. And I was, you know, I was pulling like 12-hour days. It was winter, so I was going out and riding a bus that wasn't heated for, you know, like an hour on a morning when it was like close to sub-zero temperatures. Um, Not really looking after myself very well at all. I was getting like properly run down. And then coming home again on a cold bus for about an hour and walking home for another half an hour and then doing all the rest of the stuff that I needed to get done. Um, And most of the time as well, then going off and working like a six hour night shift at the taxi company that I was working for. Um, Just, you know, sat in the office answering phones. You don't need a lot of energy for that. So that was, that was fine. And yeah, you now the, the, the weeks wore on and the cold was still there and the weeks wore on even more and the cold got worse and eventually I had a bit of a health scare and I started coughing up blood uh, just out of the blue. Um, we're not talking like, you know, like bright red sort of stuff. We're talking like this looks like internal bleeding sort of stuff. And yeah, no, that was, that was very concerning for, <laughs> for a little while. Uh, so I, I went to a doctor and my doctor said, it looks as though you have managed to, <laughs> managed to make yourself worse to the point of pneumonia. Like I can, I can hear like crackling in your lungs and all sorts of things. So uh, here's, here's a prescription for amoxicillin. Now in the UK, we don't have to purchase medicines and stuff. Uh, you just get a, a script written, like a script, and you take it along. And I think the most that you will pay for anything is uh, maybe like eight pounds. That might have gone up a bit. I'm not entirely sure. So I went off and got two weeks worth of amoxicillin, four gram doses, three times a day. I think it was. I think it was like. 2,000 milligram tablets, two tablets or two pills each time, three times a day for 14 days. And that cost me eight pounds, which is around about like, I think at the time of the exchange rate, it was like maybe 12 bucks, $12, maybe roughly, maybe like 
about the same in euros, like 10, maybe. Which is why nationalized healthcare is an amazing thing and people in America should switch to it, switch to a single payer system or whatever you want to call it, like just like a nationalized health service. It's not the end of the world. At the end of the day, it's cheaper. You still have the option to go private if you want, but on the off chance that, I don't know, there's a computer error and no one can find your insurance details, you don't have to pay anything anyway, you know? Like, it just gets taken care of and you don't die. Yeah, okay, off the soapbox, let's carry on. Um, so yeah, I, I, I basically got told, don't leave the house. Um, you are to stay as warm as you can and move around inside the house as much as you can. Don't open windows or anything, just take the drugs, move around a bit, sit down for the most part, rest, you know, like have like soup and drink lots of water and fluids and all this, that and the other, and, and you know, like the stuff that I should have been doing at the very, very beginning, but this time with added antibacterial, <laughs> antibacterial drugs and, and, you know, like all that sort of stuff as well. So, uh, so yeah, that was fun. Um, and while I was stuck inside, while I was stuck there, I, uh, I logged onto a dating website that I had not been on in probably about six years at that point, something like that. And, you know, like, it's two weeks inside. There's only so many YouTube videos that you can watch before you start getting ridiculously bored and start going to other places. The main reason that I went to this dating website was I remembered that there was, like, questionnaires and tests and games and stuff that you could play and fill out that was supposed to help your matchability rating and that sort of thing. I think it was, like, OK Cupid or something. Like, is that still going? Maybe? Dunno. Um... But yeah, like I went on there and I thought, oh, well, you know, like I'll fill out some of these like personality tests and that sort of thing. And, you know, I'll just do whatever. And there was like this one thing, like I think my profile had been viewed like once in the last like week. And before that, it hadn't been looked at for like three months or something. So this person had looked at me within the last week or so. Um, and I was like, all right, okay, like, sweet. Yeah, like, maybe maybe see who this person is. So I started looking at the profile and I was like, oh, well, actually this person sounds pretty cool. Um, you know, like not really any interest in dating or anything, but they, they live close by and yeah, this, this, this person sounds cool. So I, I messaged and basically said like, look, hi, my name's Brian. Saw that you looked at my profile. Like I, I'm stuck in the house at the minute. I'm, I'm on like medical <laughs> a medical thing where I have to stay in the house. Um, how's about when I get out, we meet up, we go for a coffee, we'll see whether or not, like, you know, we, we can chat, become friends, that sort of thing. Which is very, like, I, I want to say it's very, like, out of the ordinary for me to do something like that. I was just so done with staying inside that I thought, you know what, like, take the shot why not? And this person messaged me back and said, "Oh yeah, hi. yeah, that would be that would be quite nice actually. Like yeah, let's let's go. We'll uh, we'll go for a go for a quick coffee or something. Uh, this movie's coming out. Do you want to go see the movie? Yeah, cool. Let's go and see the movie, and then we'll we'll get some food or something. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. This sounds this sounds wonderful. Awesome. So off we went. And that person was my wife, my lovely wife Siguta. <laughs> or now she's my wife, you know, I didn't just rock up to her and be like, you're my wife now, Dave, if you, <laughs> if you get that reference. Um, League of Gentlemen. It's a very interesting old BBC comedy show that has a few problems, but the, uh, the characterization of little Englanders is surprisingly accurate. Um, yeah, so anyway, like, went up, had a coffee, Siguta had a hot chocolate, I think, or a tea or something like that, and we watched Sweeney Todd on the night of release, which isn't really your typical date night fare, but yeah, it was pretty good. 
it was all right. Um, and then we went off and chatted and, and ended up, you know, sort of like really hitting it off, talking for a very, very long time. And then I went back to Hartlepool. She went off to her apartment in Newcastle and we started seeing each other like semi-regularly, like one or two nights a week when it was possible for me to get off of work or I didn't have any prior commitments or anything like that. Um, she was studying computer science or advanced computer science, I should say. Let's get the name of the degree right. I, I was studying film and TV professional production and practice or FTV PPP and she was doing advanced computer science. Uh, just the just the bachelor's degree at that point. She went off and did the master's afterwards for another like another year um, after we moved in together. And yeah, like we we just hit it off and carried on talking and eventually moved in together. And then uh, one day she said, "Oh, I've I've been offered a job. Oh yeah, whereabouts? Bristol." <laughs> I'd never lived outside of the northeast before that. And, you know, she sort of dragged me with her, not necessarily kicking and screaming, but definitely a lot further away from my family and, and my roots than I wanted to be. And then from Bristol, after a couple of years, we went off to Bournemouth because she got another job. And then from Bournemouth, we came all the way over here, which was kind of a combination of she got a much better job that was paying a lot more and also Brexit. Like, like that's one of the main reasons that we're over here, like Brexit and a lot of, a lot of worry about that, that has not been <laughs> like the level of the worry that I had when that result came in has not been lessened over time. If anything, it's been constantly reaffirmed that I was kind of in the right and things are going worse and worse and worse. And I have a lot of worry about my family and friends and people that I know that live in the UK still. If I could bring every single one of them over here to Germany, then I would. But I can't. And there are some that I know are complete lost causes. Like, you know, my, my mum voted for Brexit. But when everything started coming out about like uh, the the actual realities of leaving the EU and the <laughs> the weird psyops campaigns that were being run on behalf of the Leave factions, she started sort of saying, "Oh God, what have I done?" and has regretted it and sort of campaigned against it ever since. Um, my dad, on the other hand, my dad is a full blown hardcore supporter, which is very, very strange because he's basically just like an age-old hippie. And, like, he knows that his only begotten grandchild, or at least the one they, the only one he knows about anyway, is, like, the, the outcome of his son marrying a, like, an Eastern European. Like, but... Apparently everything is the fault of the Eastern Europeans and the brown people and the black people and this, that and the other. And, and Brexit's going to be this amazing, wonderful thing. And yeah, like he wasn't really in my life a lot before. Like he, he's, he's been there and he's been like a, like a touchstone, you know, but the relationship has been breaking down for a while. Like, when I moved away down to Bristol, I, I tried keeping in touch with him, but he doesn't really go out of his way to keep in touch with you. You have to get in touch with him. Um, he doesn't see any of us unless we go over to his apartment. And when I was down in Bristol, obviously, like, that started getting a lot more strained, and there wasn't really a lot that I could do. I think we Skyped once or twice. Not a great deal. Um, we, when I married Saguta, that was in Bristol, and even though I'd invited him, um, and you know, we'd worked out like train links and everything because you know, getting him to drive all the way down would be a little bit of a bit of a pain. Um, didn't take us up on the offer, just stayed up in the northeast and didn't come and visit. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of crappy as well. Um, then 
Then when Rowan was, uh, you know, sort of like we found out we were going to have Rowan, I called him up, uh, uh, you know, sort of told him over the phone, like, yeah, you're going to be a granddad. And the reaction to that was, oh, that's cool. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Like delivered like this. Oh yeah, that's cool. I like I have it on good authority that after the phone had gone down, like he allowed the wall to come down and, and like, you know, actually like had some emotional reaction to it and, you know, shed a tear or two, but like you know uh, like the last time that I saw him was me and Sigurta had gone over to the UK uh from Berlin after we'd been over here for just under a year and um we all sat around a, a dinner table in a pub and, you know, we had Rowan there and he was absolutely infatuated with Rowan. He thought Rowan was great, but was sat at completely opposite side of the table and didn't like go over and, and touch him or cuddle him or, or pick him up or anything like that. I know he's he's getting on a little bit. He's a little bit frailer than he was, but he, he's, you know, he's still like got muscle. He can still do stuff. You know, he's not an invalid. And... Yeah, like, it's a weird position to be in. <laughs> it really is where, like, you're on a completely different side of politics and stuff to the people that raised you and the people that you love. And one of them is kind of coming around and knows where they've you know, like, has come to the conclusion themselves that they've made an error, like, not me sitting there going, well, you were wrong, and you know, that's that's not how you get to change people. You say, this is my opinion on the matter. And then if they come to that conclusion as well, when their thing doesn't work, like, yeah, cool, okay, awesome. But, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, this has taken a weird turn, you know? I didn't expect to start going into this. I thought I was just going to do like, here's my day, here's how I met my wife uh, in, you know, the sort of way that most millennials meet their bloody spouses these days. And instead we've ended up talking about a strained father figure relationship. Yay! <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry if I've bummed you out with this. Like, that wasn't my intention in any way, shape or form. Like, I'm actually going to try and make a, a proper conscious effort to look into the camera now. So if I am making eye contact with you, awesome. If I'm not, like, move up until I am. Like, I am sorry that it's got a little bit maudlin. Like, if, if you have a strained relationship with your parents, like, try and work at it still. If you feel that that relationship is worth saving. I feel that there's a little bit of growth that needs to be done on my dad's side before we can meet directly in the middle and sort of say, like, you know, like, let's discuss and, and sort of see where we go. Um, there's there's a little bit of bridge building that needs to occur, let's say. But, yeah, like, it, don't be afraid, if needs be, to just cut someone out of your existence if they are beyond redemption, um, you know actual racism <laughs> like actual bigotry you know stuff like that like don't don't suffer hateful people you're worth far more than they will ever allow you to be to them and you should surround yourself with love and just awesome people and awesome feelings okay good i'm glad we had this talk and this was a discussion wasn't it this wasn't just me lecturing you <laughs> I laugh because my dad has actually said that at some point. Now, this is a discussion, isn't it, Martin? Yes, Dad. I'm not just lecturing you. No, Dad. <laughs> oh, man. Right. I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to edit stuff down because I'm fairly certain I've got about an hour of footage. And, like, that's way more than I wanted. It really is. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go and get that third beer. Hopefully I don't end up putting like sad music as a backing track on this entire edit or something ridiculous like that. Right. 
I'm going to sit up properly. Because if I sit up properly, my head is within the top two thirds of the screen and then the bottom third can be for my awesome little graphics telling you that you can find me on Twitter at GamesMal. You can find me on Instagram at Martin underscore the underscore great underscore potato underscore mage. And, you know, like, possibly subscribe to the video, possibly ring the bell notification so that you can, uh, you can get notified every single time that I put a video up. Uh, possibly like the video if you like. Or, you know, don't. I'm not your mum. And, yeah, like, comment below. Like, tell me about stuff. Ask me things. Let's discuss stuff. Maybe don't necessarily weigh in with, like, family therapy suggestions. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're sort of welcome. I might not respond to them in any way, shape or form, but you never know. Um, yeah, like, like, come on, guys, and definitely go and check out Brian and Jessica Croc as well, uh, Crocs in the Kitchen. They are both awesome. They keep plugging me, and for all that they are riding the rocket ship of fame and stardom and going off and doing all these wonderful things like podcasts and stuff like that, like, I still feel like I'm not doing enough to plug them, you know? Like, there's only, there's only so much I can do to, like, try and get them to my audience, which is mainly their audience as well, because people keep coming from the crocs in the kitchen to say hi. So, hmm, yeah. Yeah, ah, right. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you have a good one. I hope that your Tuesdays and Wednesday coming is not as, not as weird and sort of off the rails as mine is <laughs> turning out to be. But uh, we'll see. Right. Have a good one. Don't forget to just enjoy whatever hobbies that you have and surround yourself with love. And I will see you next time. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>